We'll see it in the word. Let's look at Deuteronomy 6 and 3. And it reads. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it. Mm -hmm. It may be well with thee. And that ye may increase mightily as the Lord God of thy fathers has promised thee. Mm -hmm. In the land that floweth with milk and honey. In Deuteronomy 6, he is given an instruction. He says to observe to do it. Now in your spare time, go back and read the first and the seventh verse. <laughs> we did not have time. We, we will not have time to read them, all of the scriptures. What is this that he wants us to do, uh, to observe and do? In those first two verses, he said, I want you to obey all of the statutes. Everybody says statutes. And then he says the commandments. So God has statutes and commandments. Commandments are direct orders. They get direct. You can't get around it. Thou shalt not kill. That's a direct order. Y'all not in here. That's a commandment. But then there are statutes. There are rules and there are regulations that give you a, 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 a precept on how to live your life. On, and, and in those statutes, if you live according to those precepts, because when, whenever you, you, you go astray on a statute, it's not so much a sin. Because <laughs> see, that's the thing, he, he encouraged us to eat. There are some things he encouraged us to do that will, things will go well. See, you see what he said? This is what he said. He said, hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be what? Well with you. See, when God goes to blessing, it's about your total well-being. It's about your health. It's about your stability. It's about your peace. It's about, it's, it's about more things than just on uh, the financial side. But you're going to have to pursue the financial blessing of God. I promise you're going to have to pursue them. So he says that you may increase mightily. Increase mightily. Not a mighty increase, but an increase mightily. Pastor, what's the difference? It's different. Because he's stressing the increase. The increase will be mighty. He's not stressing the mightily part, which deal with strength and power. Y'all not in here. He's stressing the increase part. So he's telling you what he wants to do is he wants to increase you. And that increase will be a mighty increase. It'll be a powerful increase. It'll be such an increase you can't deny God did it for you. No, not in it. It's so many times we can of ourselves generate a certain amount of resource and wealth. But it takes God. What God is speaking here is, is an e increase that's going to increase you mightily. So then he says, uh, and he'll take you to the land that he promised. Speaking to Israel, he says, in the land that floweth with milk and honey. A flow, continuous flow of milk and honey. Speaking of productive activity, speaking of the milk. Now listen, you can't have milk without cows. You can't have cows without land. And that land has to have all kinds of grass on it. Y'all not in there. If that flow is going to be a continuous flow of milk, y'all not in there. That means that it's going to be the calves are going to come every spring. Y'all not in there. And it's going to be a, a, a reproduction even of the herd. It's, it's more to it than milk flowing. <laughs> and, then, and then he says in the honey, which speaks of uh, the activity of the bees pollinating and going from plant to plant and all of the growth. It just speaks of increasing mightily. And so you say, well, Pastor, he was speaking to Israel. Well, we are Israel. The Bible says now that we've been engrafted into the family. He says we were a wild olive tree. Oh, the devil about it. In the New Testament, it's not the Old Testament. In the New Testament, he said, "You are wild on the tree." See, the Bible says Israel is his. Uh, uh, it was uh, is his olive tree. Y'all know that. Israel is the olive tree, and it says, "Now, when you see her, uh, send forth her branches when it's yet tender." See, that's a prophecy of, of Isaiah, and, and it was fulfilled in our lifetime. Some of us, I was born in '51. It was fulfilled in 1948 when Israel, in one day, became a nation. The Bible said, "Can a nation be born in a day?" That's what the Bible said. Isaiah said that 800 years before Christ. We're talking about 2,800 years, almost 3,000 years. Isaiah prophesied, "Can a nation be born in one day?" And in one day. 
And he said, the generation that saw the, the olive tree and its branches shooting forth, he said, that generation would pass away until everything in this world be fulfilled. Y'all not in here with me. So look what he says in Proverbs 10 and 22. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. Uh -huh. And he addeth no sorrow with it. Now look at what Proverbs 23 says. Labor not to be rich. Uh -huh. Cease from thine own wisdom. Uh -huh. Wilt thou set thine eye up, eyes upon that which is not? Uh -huh. For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. So we spoke this to you Sunday. Yeah. When God says the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. God has a blessing that makes us rich. It may not put the riches, now watch this, in your personal bank account. God, God. But it puts it under your authority. That's why he said the kingdom is at hand. It's in your reach. And if we'll live kingdom principles, because he said what you do is you seek first the kingdom. So you don't have to get to heaven and take a rocket ship now. It's in your hands. It's, hand. it's, hand. it's close to you now. And if you can tap into that, he said, and if you seek that and God's righteousness or the way God does things, y'all got it. Here. He said, all these things, they'll be added to you. So that's why I said, the blessing of the Lord make you rich and it add those sorrows. All of those blessings that God gives you, you won't have to stress and strain them. They're going to keep you up at night worrying about it. Can't nobody get in there and take it from you. You don't have to worry about the identity thief. Because that's what Proverbs 23 is saying. You know, about what it said. It's saying that don't labor be rich. And, uh, he said, and cease from your own wisdom. In other words, there is a wisdom about the earthly wisdom that can get riches. The mob is rich. The gangster is rich. But it's sorrow with it. They can't enjoy it. I don't know how bad it is now, but back in the, in the 90s and the 70s, and especially when we started the ministry in 99, the gang violence in Texas County was so bad that they, they, they purchased this vehicle. I can't think of the armored vehicle, the name of it, and they used it to bust up a lot of these gangs because there were so many drive-bys. I'm not in here. And people couldn't sit, the, I'm talking about drug dealers now, they couldn't sit on their sofa. They had to sit on the floor. So y'all not in here. They were going to drive by us. And they can't enjoy it. Sorrow added with it. I was watching Denzel in the movie, The American Gangster. I don't know if y'all seen that movie. Didn't look at that movie. That's, a, that's all a true story. A black man uh -huh, had, uh, was making hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, in, 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 uh, and he was, they, 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 they said it was so unusual because the mafia uh, was working all around him, and it never had been seen like that before that a black man could work with the judges and the police and the lawyers and the, the judicial system and pay this one off and pay that one off. But he had sorrow with him. And he ended up, 30 members of his family ended up going to prison. And then he got 70 years in cell, but then because he cooperated with the government, they got him out in about 15. So see, the riches that men can come up with, it had sorrow. But God said, the riches that I'll add to you, there'll be no sorrows added. So what he says is that riches are, they, they can take wings and they can fly away. They can fly toward heaven. They just leave you. Get out of your reach. Get into the trouble. Well, let's do this. Come on. Our love for God and our love for his word will not bring the blessing of God. Mm -hmm. Nor will it bring the financial blessings of God. It's what we focus on that will grow in our lives. Come on. It is what we give attention to that will attract that thing to us. Come on. I believe we need as a part of our focus the financial blessings of God. The financial anointing and blessing has to become important to you and be a part of your focus both personally and corporately. Okay. We're going to have to make it important to us and corporately. If you're living well and you're doing good, you need to be concerned about the group. I'm a, I'll say it a little later in my message. The best thing you can do to help the poor is not be one of them. How can you help somebody? The best thing you can do for the addict or the person that's bound with some burden 
just to not have that burden. I wish I was in you, but somebody else loved it myself. Y'all hear what I'm saying? We want to help people. We want to help situations. We want to help poor. We want to help those that have whatever. We want to help the orphan. We want to help them all. But we have to be blessed to do these things. Amen. And we can't shy away from that. And we can't dress like we broke. Amen. Missionaries back in the day, some of them would dress poor to try to get sympathy. Because they felt like if they showed up and wore nice clothing, people would think that they didn't need money for their missionary journeys. That's the truth. They wouldn't have their rings on over their watches. They try to have a poverty-like look. You know, some people like that look. They'll help you when you look broke. What do they do when they want money over there in Africa? They put the kid with flies. That's your cattle that's so thin and they're about to fall over. And they're trying to tug at your heart strength. But I'm here to tell you, that's not really how you help the poor by making people feel sympathy for them. How you help them, you have to investigate and examine who you're giving it to that's supposed to be helping them. And it may be a person Wearing a thousand dollar pair of shoes. But right. this is don't, don't, don't shut me out till I get through. <laughs> they may have a big house in the Hamptons. But we look at that and we say, well, that must be going to them. See how quiet it is? Because what it is, the way you really help somebody is by blessing somebody that's blessed to do their assignment. They say about 20% of the money is given to those starving folks in Africa. Only gets to them. Yeah. Only about 20%. So you got to know who to give it to. Amen. Sometimes you can't even, even the, the United States can't even send money to certain countries because the leaders and dictators of the country don't even give it to the people. Right. You see what I'm saying? So the best way to help the poor and help the impoverished, you got to find out who you are giving this stuff to to see that they are being a good steward of it. Yeah. I won't get ahead of myself. Come on, read it. Every scripture must be put into context. Mm -hmm. One place God says, labor not to be rich. Yeah. That's why we must rightly divide the word of truth. Come on. So remember instructions are seasonal. They can be personal, customized, and they are for a time. Experiences do not make you powerful. Come on. Training makes you far more powerful than experiences. Really? Experience doesn't mean you have arrived at the right conclusion. What kind of future are you willing to be trained for? It is really important you get a picture of the future you believe God wants for you. We must embrace what the Bible teaches about the financial blessings of the Lord because I am seeing so many people's dreams fail. We first need to ask what I am doing wrong, what do I need to correct in my life, and what can I do a little bit better? Seek first the kingdom of God because you can have financial accumulation but not have financial peace. And that's what's happening. People are gathering to themselves. Yeah. Financial accumulation. They've accumulated. They have multiple bank accounts. They have assets. But they do not have financial peace. And I want you to have financial peace. If you have financial peace, according to Deuteronomy 6, he said it can go well with you if you observe the statutes and the commandments. You cannot, you cannot be blessed with God and working in his financial system and not be living according to his rules. Read what happened. Financial blessings make it possible to properly provide for your family. Here's the first and the most important reason for you to tap into the financial blessings of God, his financial system, so you can properly provide for your family. 